running a 21st century railway needs ever more complex systems. On the newer lines, these are already built in. The older ones need constant updating. But wherever they are, the systems are only as good as the people who run them. And the people who run them have to be trained. Ishmael has been waiting over two years to be accepted onto the train driver's course. The training will take four months. If he passes, his salary will almost double. Most of us, we are eager to get on the train now. Ishmael will have a full month in the classroom before he's allowed to take the driver's seat. You have to work hard for it. The only time it becomes easy is if you know it. It's a technical thing. If you don't know it, you won't. You can't guess it. This is the master controller. It's a dead man handle. Yeah. You drop the handle and automatically the emergency brakes will come on as a safety. To drive a train, it's easy. It's knowing what to do when things go wrong. These days, when trains go wrong, they're increasingly complicated to fix. This means more and more technical demands on the drivers. At the end of the month, Ishmael and his fellow student Nengi will be tested on their knowledge of the rolling stock. Only then will they be let loose on a train. It's a bit scary because you know you're carrying around three, four hundred passengers and anything can go wrong. You dream of this, you think of this is your life now. Since I started this training, I've been dreaming of trains. I just pray, oh God, I don't want to dream of trains. Let me just sleep and wake up one. <laughs> just. <laughs> In the meantime, there's a lot of homework to do. My wife is annoyed with me. Every day she hears about <laughs> something new for the day, and she's had enough. But she don't want to say it, but I know. If he passes the course, Ishmael will be based at Wembley Park. The station is currently being rebuilt to serve the new stadium. Over the coming months, the work is also going to affect the track itself, meaning trains will not be able to run through Wembley Park at weekends. This presents a particular problem for Jubilee Line trains manager, Des Moffat. At the moment, we're doing work at Wembley Park for the stadium renovations, which means where we'd normally reverse trains in the points there, we can't use it. It's become a matter of pride for Des to get round the problem without resorting to a bus replacement service. Now, under normal circumstances, we run buses, but we're not a bus operating company, we're a train operating company. So what we're doing is running trains single line between Stanmore there, Kingsbury there, which means they run up and down the same line, up the northbound, back down the northbound. Now, that creates problems because all the safety equipment and the equipment related to the trains are all for trains travelling in one direction. To make Des's plans work, the points and signals that ensure the trains run safely will have to be locked shut one by one, all the way from Stanmore to Kingsbury. This is an unusual strategy, and Des's reputation depends on it working smoothly. He's got an anxious night ahead of him to ensure the track is ready for the first train of the weekend. It has its stresses, we're even running a model train set. You know, trains derail, people make mistakes, people don't follow the rules, um, there might be something on the track. Normally it could be a, a, a spider or something right, that can cause a major operating problem. John Polly was a driver himself until he gave it up for a desk job at Network Control. I enjoyed it and I do miss it in, in a funny sort of way, but at least I've got my uh, little trains to play with instead now and they're much less trouble. I wouldn't have told the company, but I'd have probably spent a lot of my time driving on the Northern Line for free, but uh, I'd never let on. It's nice to see the public come along and they, they recognise it as the tube, and of course a lot of them have happy memories, but I think the majority have memories of being squashed into a tube car. Horace Clark has a traditional solution to an age-old problem. 
that particular area down there, there should be a thick layer of bird droppings on the floor there, and it was really, really bad because they seem to have taken up nesting all along the girders there. Pigeons and their droppings are a constant problem in depots. There was so much of it, um, we were concerned that it might be a health hazard. Some of the guys suggested once that we got um, someone in to shoot them, but I think the staff got a bit upset about that because they found that uh, inhumane. But the more humane methods all failed to get rid of the pigeons until they found Ted. All right, this is Ted. Ted's an eight-year-old Harris hawk. And he's a bird that uh, comes from Central South America. For this particular one, he was bred in Romford. I'm just going to attach the uh, transmitter to his tail. Also, you have a bell, and that enables us to uh, locate Ted when he goes out of uh, eyesight, basically. We can hear where he is. Working with birds of prey, Paul Mathanew has to be attuned to their moods. You can tell by his facial expressions that he's, he's a little bit on edge at the moment. He doesn't like his feet being touched, this one. OK, we take now he's completely free to go. The idea is that the bird's flown on a regular basis in these sheds, and um, pigeons that are here become unnerved at his presence. They uh, tend to eventually get the idea that a bird of prey has taken up residency in the area, and it's safer to be somewhere else. He knows these sheds like the back of his wing, basically. If he gets one, I'm in trouble because uh, he can spend the rest of the day feeding on it if I can't get to him. So we do all we can to get to the bird before he devours it, swap the food that he's caught for food which is in our bag, so he still gets a reward. After half an hour, Ted has been flown through just two of the four sheds at the depot. playing me about. No, he's not here. I thought he was in front of me. Lost my bird already. <clears throat> um, I might have to track him down, basically. As you see with the transmitter, I have to get a signal and find him. Could take 10 minutes, it could take 10 hours. It's less than 24 hours till Ishmael takes his test. Do you know what that means? Nengi is also doing her homework. You're prepared, but at the same time, you're worried. If everything goes well, by this time tomorrow, it's party time. Party time. <laughs> it's just over an hour since Ted disappeared. We decided to fly out the shed um, and pick a fight with the local crows, magpies, gulls and anything he could find over towards where the houses were. And he was getting uh, getting quite beaten from him, actually, so he, uh, he was losing, yeah, because he was, he was in a gang, so... But uh, he came down eventually and uh, got him safely back. As you can see, they want him out of their area. This is their territory, and they want him gone, basically. It's past midnight at Stanmore. The last train has been stabled in the yard. Des and the team are ready to start a long night securing the points for single line working. Thank you, Pat. John Bird bye -bye. will be in charge of the work. All right, traction current is now discharged on both rows. It's now safe to go onto the railway. Lovely. The points are locked shut one by one. The padlocks, uh, Simon. I've got the padlocks. The padlocks will make sure the points can't be changed by mistake. Should be it, the last one's in. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be it. That's a single line working in now. When we get back on the platform, I shall hand it back over. The railway will be handed over to me, and then this is all mine until That's Monday morning. Yeah. My nightmare for 48 hours. The team have been working all night, 
and there's just time to get some tea before setting off on the first train of the morning. Over the weekend, it will take 35 extra staff to provide single line working. At this time of day, they often number more than the passengers themselves. We have an obligation to all our customers, not just the ones at the busy stations. Any customer is equally important, whether they're at a busy station or a quiet station. They all have equal importance and we're obliged to provide them with a top quality service. But the first train is barely out of the station before the top quality service breaks down. There's nothing wrong with a single line operation, but by a stroke of bad luck, this train has developed a fault and we'll have to go straight back into the sidings. But all the points have been padlocked shut. So this will mean undoing last night's patient work. John's not happy. So I'm gonna have to take the single line out and change the train over. Which is a nightmare. At Stanmore, Des Moffat's plans to keep trains running while engineering work is going on have come unstuck. The first train of the morning has broken down and needs to be taken out of service. But this is not as simple as it sounds. We have to unclip all the scotch all the points. This train goes into the sidings, we bring another one back out, and then we have to secure all the routes back up again. Until they can get the train swapped, there'll be no service at all. 17A's are unsecured. Tim? Uh, 18 B's are unsecured. Two of us go down, pull up, straight off, train away. Is that Naim Khan? Des is desperate to speed the process up and get the service running again. So what we can do is double end the train. So we have one on each end. When it goes into the reception road, the driver doesn't have to walk all the way back through and just liven it straight up and get the bit metronomic. That's what we're looking for. There's no time to turn off the traction current. So the team rely on years of experience to perform the job safely. What was the time of that? That's not bad, is it? How long does that take? 17 minutes, that's pretty good time. If we'd have double-ended, we'd have done it even quicker. In 17 minutes, we've removed all that protection and got a train back in and back out. That isn't too bad. The service resumes, and at last, Des feels single line working is going to succeed after all. We're back up and running. Just believe in yourself, all right? It's only nerves that will let you down, all right? And this is really all that stands now between you and becoming a full, full-fledged train operator. Take your time over things, and I think you should be okay. Yeah. In less than an hour, Ishmael will know if he has a future driving trains. But train operators are only one part of running a railway. Can you go severe delays on the clockwise circle, please? A good controller knows exactly where all his trains are. Most of it's in your head. At Baker Street, line controller Simon Flatow has a new system to show where his trains are. It's called Trackernet. You're instantly informed by the diagram that there's a train present, so it, it's faster than looking it up in a timetable to gather information. We're running three different railway lines here, four or five depots, yeah, um, 75 and a half trains, uh, and it's pretty constant. Today, Simon has to organise some emergency engineering work. A signal needs adjusting near Finchley Road. Simon will manoeuvre his trains like pieces on a chessboard to create space for the engineers to work and provide an empty train to get them to the site. Hello, 432 Max, to get up as a Baker Street, please. That's the train we're going to use for the engineering job. Just going in while, okay? That's it. Thank you. Thanks. As 432 approaches Baker Street, train manager Brian Meager gets ready to take the engineers into the tunnel. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. 
the passengers from train 432 will have to wait on the platform while the work's carried out. You know the next one's been out there, yeah? Yes. While the work goes on, there'll be no service running on the Metropolitan Line. Well, we're just coming up to the area um, where they're going <coughs> to reduce the current in the signal track. They're going to let me know where it is. How far is it? Well, we're stuck at this signal now. It's been stuck around the corner. We'll be able to shout when we get there. Just before the repeat, we'll be able the team will be given just 10 minutes to do the work. Near to the base, we are approaching uh, the area concerned now. We're just coming to a stop any second now, over. Thank you very much. They've got approximately 10 minutes, 10 minutes to take them on select. And, uh, Lovely, this will be fine. Yeah. Switching off the traction current would only add more delays. Yeah, received that, confirmed traction current is on. OK, gentlemen. Right. The engineers will have to work fast, but with 630 volts just inches away, mistakes could be fatal. So the engineer's on site. Um, and you're happy with that? Sweet, OK, then. Yeah. Already, the work is causing delays. Five minutes, gentlemen, five minutes. It's the start of Ishmael's final test. A safety critical mistake now, and his ambition to become a train operator will be over. It might take him years to get back on the course. And I need to check the pressure gauge in my front cam. Okay. To... Okay, Ishmael. Take a seat, mate. You'll be pleased to know the assessment's over. How do you think you did? I think I should pass. You think you should pass? Yeah. Well, I can confirm that for you. Thank you. Very well done, mate. It's been a pleasure Thanks. teaching you anyway. Okay. So, congratulations. I enjoyed it, but the nerves. It was very nervous. And I need to tell my wife. Hello, Fina. Yeah, I've passed the test in the Fina. Yeah, I finished my assessment and I've passed everything, man. <laughs> Your big sis is a train ups now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the engineers start to pack up with two minutes to spare. They've made good time. So our last two colleagues were at the other end checking the relay and uh, they'll be back on the road shortly. OK. Let's go. No more access and everybody's clear of the track. Over. <laughs> Back to normal, OK? Cheers, thanks for your help. Uh, that was effectively like clockwork. That was quite a controlled event, which is what, I'm, you know, paid, what we're paid to do. So, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. The engineering work has caused a disruption to the service but it's soon forgotten in the cut and thrust of a busy day in the control room. Non-stop Liverpool Street, non-stop Liverpool Street, please. This is due to evacuation of fire alarm equipment. Oh, gosh. Received and understood. Have you called the police? I mean, I'm happy to supply the police if you're feeling threatened. You're telling me it's a school kid. Ishmael has waited a long time for the chance to finally drive his own train. <laughs> For his first few months, he'll be accompanied by an instructor. watching everything.
his first real test is getting the train to stop at the mark. But at the new Jubilee Line stations, it's even more critical. If the train doesn't line up exactly with the platform doors, they won't open and you'll have to drive straight on to the next station. This is never popular with the customers. and clear the closing doors, mind the doors. See, I wasted an extra 10 seconds at that station. 10 seconds might not sound like much, but London Underground have a target of 24 trains per hour on the Jubilee line. Every second counts. I think it went well enough, but apart from two stations, the first one, Westminster, I read the stopping mark here when I should have read it here. But overall, Ishmael's first day has been a success, and he's ready for his new life as a driver. It was fun. Fun. I'm a lot confident now, and I'm ready to go up and down. Next time, a trip into the past with Oliver Green. This is also the origin of the, the word tube. While Jason Collins explores what lies beneath Waterloo Station. Mm -hmm.